Hello and welcome to another Board of Education meeting recap, this time for April 2021. I'm your co-host, J.D. Harden, joined by my co-host, Mary Elizabeth Davis. Good to see you, J.D., and thank you, as always, for joining us. Welcome back, and what we uh, would like to just say is that this month's meeting in April was jam-packed with a lot of action by our board, uh, and we've got a lot of stuff to get to and share uh, with you and uh, get you caught up to speed as we are now, as we uh, sit here, only about four weeks away from the end of this school year taking place, which is just mind-boggling. So, but let's start right uh, with our first actions that took place during our study session. And those were a couple of actions or a couple of items that were brought forth by our board members. We allow them the opportunity to bring uh, items for discussion uh, at the start of board meetings each month. And this month we had two uh, particular topics uh, that were brought up by uh, different board members. That's right. Mrs. Pope had a board member agenda item related to digital citizenship and really um, wanted to build on the work that the board had done uh, and left uh, off in October of 2019. So let's listen to Mrs. Pope. While there are great advantages to many online and digital resources, as we've seen firsthand, especially over this last year, there are also significant dangers and consequences to too much consumption or consumption of the wrong things. So I know as parents, I think we worry that we don't know what we don't know about this online world. And as educators, I know that we always worry about our students' wellness, both academic and social and emotional, both at school and at home. So in 2019, if we can skip over this previous year and get our heads back there, the board had a great conversation at our whole board training around this idea of digital citizenship, strong digital learning practices, device use, etc. And I'm sure it's still living on a giant post-it note somewhere. But I remember studying um, Baltimore City schools and some other districts, and we were really ready to begin work around this last year, but clearly we were interrupted. But honestly, I'm glad that we didn't do this then because the world has changed in every way, certainly including our relationship with devices. So now that our strategic plan is taking shape, I feel like there's a lot of language and work around a healthy balance in digital and print, as well as student wellness, which all falls under this umbrella of being good digital citizens and establishing good digital learning practices. This is important. And it can be done within the school day, um, especially in the beginning, and maybe even revisit it at the end of the semester, at the beginning of a new semester, to just remember what you've done. Uh, I think it will help because when we come back, it's going to be a whole different ball game. A second board member item um, was the opportunity for our chair, Mrs. Holly Cobb, to provide an overview of the recent whole board training that the entire Board of Education engaged in. And um, JD, she had a lot to say about the work that they do together in those whole board trainings. That's right. It's a very integral part of the work of the board, and uh, they take these uh, these key opportunities. And this most recent one really centered around establishing the board's new vision and mission uh, for our school district and let's uh, see what resulted as a, as a part of that great work. You know, we do have opportunities for training as a board, um, and I'm so grateful for that because it always provides us uh, time to really dig in and, and uh, have great, deeper conversations uh, about certain things. And so we did recently just have whole board training in March. I really enjoyed the discussion that we had around our strategic plan, which you'll be hearing more and more about. But we actually um, took the time and crafted a new vision and mission statement for Henry County Schools. And so that was, a, that was a great activity and just love that we were each able to provide our own, you know, perspective on what we feel is, uh, would be a best vision and mission statement for our, our school system. Our Board of Education dedicates a large quantity of time to studying and reflecting on what effective school boards do in our country and really aim to define their governance model for our community. It was really a great recap and it really followed a quite excellent day. 
For sure. And of course, moving from there, uh, we get we get into the heart of, uh, you know, of course, each and every board meeting, which is, uh, you know, that of our informational items. Uh, and one of those key informational items that really helps establish, uh, you know, the work and operations of a school district is that of setting and developing a budget. Uh, and of course, uh, our chief financial officer, Ms. Shanika Clay, was able to provide, you know, of course, the latest updates to our, our financial services uh, division. But then she was able to walk the board uh, through and, and our our audience members through the budget development process, which leads to some key uh, outcomes for one, some mid-year adjustments in FY22, which are really foundational, and I mean FY21, excuse me, that are really foundational, but then moving into establishing a solid budget for FY22. Yeah, that's right. You know, it is April. It is the time when uh, I recommend to the Board of Education a tentative budget for their adoption. And uh, we would welcome you to view the comprehensive presentation, report, and discussion by our Chief Financial Officer, Shanika Clay, um, by visiting our website or our YouTube channel. But the highlights for you start with FY21. FY21, our organization experienced a $45 million revenue shortfall, but due to the quick action of this Board of Education to institute an emergency spending resolution, as well as manage the pacing of expenditures throughout this year, coupled with relief through our austerity restoration um, authorized by our General Assembly and Governor, we have stabilized this organization's financial picture in order to build a strong, strategic aligned uh, uh, budget for the FY22 uh, school year. Now, I'll tell you the key highlights out of that FY22 recommendation that the board proceeded to adopt with a 5-0 vote um, include a commitment to a quality workforce so that our students have the best services, support, and instruction possible in public education, and a historic commitment to the services and the learning opportunities for our young people. We actually saw our per pupil expenditure actually increase in order to serve students who may benefit from the intensity and assertive preparation for a quality school year next year. It was really a great dialogue and obviously a very complex uh, season to manage a budget preparation, but we would really love for you to listen in. The net result indicates that we are on pace to invest in reserves instead of relying on reserves to fund our FY21 operations. This pivot from a revenue shortfall to revenues in excess of expenditures provides a stable foundation to build the FY22 fiscal plan. Consistent with past budget cycles, the board has expressed interest in investing in the personnel of Henry County Schools. We know that the key to advancing opportunities, access, and outcomes for students and to provide the guarantee of an exceptional learning experience and high performing school district, we must retain and attract the best talent in this profession. We believe our students deserve the most effective teachers, leaders, and staff, and have prepared an FY22 budget recommendation to continue ensuring we have a competitive strategy to employ a talented workforce. The Board of Education moved to adopt the FY22 tentative budget as it was recommended. They will now proceed to schedule the FY22 final budget adoption for May 10th and will have a budget hearing at 6.30 that afternoon as well. Now some of those key highlights include a 1% raise for all job families here in Henry County Schools, really reflecting that commitment to a talented workforce and that ability to attract and retain exceptional educators and support professionals. There is also an investment in job families that have a starting salary below that of $15 an hour to it with a 50 cent raise for all members of that job family, no matter their level of experience. This successfully gets our organization's minimum wage out of the $8 range for the first time. Now that investment, coupled with the 1% raise, is really a commitment to students having access to the highest quality professionals and retaining the talent that's here in Henry County Schools. But it was coupled with how do we make historic investments in the services and the academic experiences for children as well. 
Included in the FY22 budget is a commitment for a mental health specialist to be allocated to each of our elementary, middle, and high schools. There's also a commitment to realizing our strategic plan and rolling out a writing plan and a writing program for our students in K through 12 grades. Um, there is an opportunity in this moment to consider how it is we are bringing comprehensive support services and an academic infrastructure that brings our strategic plan to life and our board accomplished just that, an investment in the direction and future of our organization. Yeah, we, we're really, you know, wanting to hone in on, again, the, the tight alignment of that FY22 budget now coupled with the fact that we have a brand new strategic plan that's going to set the course for the next five years. And our board, along with the recommendations of the leadership team here in the district, have really tightly aligned those two together. And of course, um, we had uh, Dr. Carl Knowlton who was able to talk about the next steps of that strategic plan and how we move forward from here. That's right. I mean, it's clear that our community wanted more from um, our schools. Our families count on more from our schools. So our board has had to invest more for our schools. And, um, and our strategic plan, which is about to be launched publicly, unveiled for the first time, um, it also charts the course for our future. And one small piece was missing. It was our Board of Education reflecting on the hopes, the dreams, and the aspirations that were captured from our community in this entire process. And they needed to capture a vision and mission for the organization, well, and they shared that. And they, they most definitely were excited to, uh, to be able to share that with the community, and they had a lot of great feedback. So let's, let's take a listen. Starting 2017, 2018, the focus at this time was to stabilize our foundation. The work included the development of the core belief and commitments, as well as the policy development for BAB, Henry's Plan of Action. Let's move to 2019, 2020, with a focus on strengthening our foundation through the, the work of policy IAB, Educational Accountability, and policy IB, Henry's Organization Accountability to ensure a high-performance school district, a business agenda item in today's meeting. And then there's 2020 through 2026, crafting our direction. The work during this time included clarifying our mission and vision, as well as launching a strategic plan complemented by priority outcomes to hold ourselves accountable to the metrics our community voice that matter to them the most. Let's start with the mission, to empower all students with exceptional opportunities and access that lead to their success in a global society. And the vision is to ensure a high quality, world class education for every student. It is just nice to see it in print. You know, all the work that we did uh, doing whole board training uh, is awesome to see it in print because it really looks good and it speaks volumes for this, for this governance team. So I want to say thank you for all of the hard work that. Her, uh, the executive team has done, Dr. Davis and her team has done, because truly this is the mission. This is our mission for the next five years, and this is our vision. Now the real job begins, and that's executing what we have here. And if you look at what the mission says, there's two words in there that I like to see. On the mission it says global. On the vision it says world. So that means that we are charged now to ensure that every student that crosses the stage from here on out is positioned to not only compete here locally in Henry County or in the state of Georgia, but is here to compete nationally and in a global economy. Oh, how wonderful that will be to see our students being the next CEOs, the next COOs of Fortune 500 and global companies. Job well done, Henry County. Job well done. So as you heard from the comments that our board was able to provide, there really was a desire to come out of this pandemic, uh, you know, stronger than when we entered it. And, and, you know, as you can see through the mission and the vision, uh, that it seems like that mission was accomplished. And of course, there was another component to this, and that's really being ready for next year, the urgency um, to make sure that our students are prepared uh, to carry the momentum forward as we enter uh, FY22. Yeah, I mean, certainly having clarity about the direction of this organization is vital coupling the investment with it, but we can't look past the significance of bridging this 
certainly unprecedented school year into next and ensuring that we are comprehensively prepared to wrap around students for both their learning needs as well as the, um, the needs that may be presented uh, related to having disruption in their learning. So as a result of our federal government, which has deployed the Elementary and Secondary Emergency Relief Fund, which now has three streams of funding that has resulted, starting with CARES One in last summer, which for Henry County Schools was a $6 million allocation, and it was dedicated towards the opening of our schools. CARES II was a mid-year allocation from the federal government, and half of that has been used to sustain services in our current school year, and half of that will be dedicated to uh, mitigating our revenue shortfall, as well as um, investing in support services for kids for next year. But this third revenue stream falling under that emergency, or that emergency relief fund known as ESSER is called the ARPA funds. That's the America, America's Rescue Plan funds that have been allocated from the federal government. Now, Henry County Schools has been allocated $53 million, but that is over two years and three summers. And it is designed to accelerate student learning and to be innovative in how we serve students. We want to invite you to visit our website where we intend to transparently communicate all of the details of these unique revenue streams that all fall under this federal umbrella referred to as ESSER. But in this board meeting, our Board of Education had an opportunity to look at where we are starting in preparation for this two years and three summers body of work and what it means for our most immediate year ahead. So let's listen in. Henry County Schools has four big areas that we feel like are the right ways to invest in student learning that will mirror your expectations. And those investment categories, or as I've taken to calling them buckets, can be seen up on the screen. So first and foremost, our students and teachers need to feel safe and secure in their schools. And our investment in that bucket there of learning environment is going to be centered around ensuring that that's the case. So second, we know that in order for our students to learn, our core business, we first need to ensure that students are in the right frame of mind to be able to learn. Now third, we recognize that we also have thousands of students who are returning to our campuses to learn after more than a year away. And so we have to make sure that we're making additional investments in order to make both the transition back to campus and our transition to running uh, thousands of students in an impact virtual setting are invested in. And then lastly, and certainly not least, we have to invest deeply to address the reality that this interruption to learning will result in the need to have supports in order to accelerate the pace and close gaps for students who may have had them develop in the last 15 months. Three other key uh, informational items that were you know, shared with our board uh, as reports uh, included first uh, the, the update on HCBOE policy DJE around purchasing and what this uh, latest update entails is the opportunity to provide greater clarity uh, and focus around sharing out our, our purchasing practices uh, with the community and, and touching certain key segments uh, whenever those opportunities arise. Sure, this really stemmed out of a board member item offered by Mr. McDaniel, I believe uh, last board meeting, and it inserts a commitment that the board expects of the superintendent to uh, really ensure how to do business with Henry County Schools is clear and available to our local businesses um, as well as businesses in the region. Um, and so that's now out for public review and we'd invite you to reference it and provide any of your reaction um, and it will be up for board adoption in our May board meeting. And then, of course, we moved from there to uh, have uh, Mr. Kirk Shrum um, from our school leadership uh, division uh, update the board with uh, a report on uh, really strengthening the, the leadership capabilities of all of our principals all across the district with some, with some key uh, you know, opportunities and, and practices. Yeah, just really recognizing the key lever that the school principal is in the health of a community, health of a school, and strength of the academic environment in that school. And and so becoming deliberate about what effectiveness looks like for um, principals in Henry County School and how the investment of the board needs to surround that, um, that, that, 
work in effectiveness. Um, so it was a great uh, conversation on the board and aligns very nicely with what the board has uh, identified as what they expect in, um, in each of their policies. And one of the last informational items we were able to uh, provide uh, to the board was the opportunity to uh, share the, the solid relationship between our school district uh, and the role we get to play in helping shape legislation uh, during uh, the General Assembly each year. And uh, we were able to walk through that with the board, show that their role in helping craft a lot of legislation was vitally important during this General Assembly uh, and some of their strategic uh, priorities which uh, or, or their legislative priorities I should say that are adopted each fall rolling into the session and then of course the meeting that they get to have with the legislators uh, sets the foundation for the things that we hope to see um, from a public education standpoint in Henry County Schools and we're very very thankful to be a strategic partner with our legislators uh, and the work that they do under the Gold Dome. That's right, and thank you, J.D., for the role you play as our uh, public relations liaison and the work you do under the Gold Dome on behalf of public education for here in Henry County and across the state. And as we mentioned, it was a jam-packed meeting, and that, that extended on into the uh, business items that we were able to cover, uh, many of which the board, uh, of course, then took action on uh, in the uh, subsequent business meeting. So let's transition over to, to the business meeting again, and we'll cover those, uh, those business items that the board was able to take action on. But we start each and every business meeting uh, you know, with uh, you know, an inspiration from our students. And uh, this month, was, uh, you know, it was accomplished with uh, Raya Allen from Luella Middle School and, and her ability to uh, share a poem with the board. That's right. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. Thank you. And so moving from there, we also get the opportunity to celebrate all the wonderful uh, accomplishments of our students and staff and our awards and recognition. Again, carrying that theme of jam-packed, we had eight different groups we were able to recognize. Um, you know, we had our uh, you know, poetry recitation winner uh, from a previous month's recognition, uh, the Allstate Band uh, and Orchestra, um, you know, students who were able to go on to the Georgia Music, Music Educators Association State Conference. Uh, we celebrate Ananya Augustine, four-time district spelling bee champion, now the Georgia State spelling bee champion. Uh, we are uh, looking so forward to her being able to go on to the national level and represent Henry County Schools. Also, uh, we have a lot of mathletes uh, in Henry County Schools, and they were on display, uh, their talents and their skills uh, as a part of the Griffin Risa Math Competition. And then we had uh, the Georgia Young Arthurs, uh, you know, participants who went on and now go on to the state competition. Basketball champions. Eagles Landing High School, what a game last month uh, and, and their big celebration as 5A state champions. It's the second year in a row Henry County Schools has won the boys 5A state championship. Dutchtown the previous year, Eagles Landing this year. Uh, of course, we have so many leaders all throughout our district that take part in our very unique uh, you know, and, and special uh, leadership academy uh, and the different uh, cohorts that exist from uh, Aspire, the lead cohort, and then of course we have an APIP cohort that really focuses on our first year assistant principals and building capacity for them. Uh, and then we kind of rounded out our, um, our uh, recognitions uh, with a special recognition from uh, State Representative uh, Regina Lewis-Ward who was congratulating the board and, of course, all of our schools, our high schools, on their recognition for their AP honors um, this past year. So a lot of stuff to celebrate um, before we then got into the, the business side. Well, items. and you know what I love? Right <laughs> there in that celebration, exceptional academics, exceptional fine arts, exceptional athletics, and exceptional professionals. That's what makes up Henry County Schools, and it was great to celebrate. Exactly right. Now, moving in uh, from there into our business uh, action uh, items, uh, there were nine, uh, or actually ten items uh, on the list, and two were um, actually asked to be pulled out separately uh, and receive their own separate votes aside from those on the consent agenda. The first being a one-time pay supplement that the board approved um, to uh, support uh, the incredibly hard work of our employees over the past year. 
Right, this was really made possible and initiated by uh, Governor Kemp and the authorization of the State Board of Education of his recommendation to extend a one-time pay supplement to, um, to job families uh, of a variety of scope to, um, in this school year. And what really our board was able to do was extend that and um, ensure that there was a one-time pay supplement included in the April paycheck that reflected the governor's commitment and our board's commitment to employees who have navigated this um, this year. The extension of that comes in the fact that Governor Kemp actually recommended a thousand dollars and our board took action to enhance that to a fifteen hundred dollar one-time pay supplement for all job families uh, to be inclusive because really our employees are the backbone of this system and it's what uh, drives us each and every day to meet the you know the, the exceptional uh, outcomes for our students and so we're very appreciative of that. Um, moving from there another unanimous vote on the uh, tentative budget. So that really sets the stage for next month where we'll have one more budget hearing at 6.30 prior to our seven o'clock business session on May 10th, and which hopefully on May 10th, we will have a final budget that really sets the tone for the, uh, the upcoming school year. And our consent agenda was also quite as rigorous and included the board 5-0 adopting a revised code of conduct to get us ready for the next year. It also included student and staff device replacement for anticipated loss. Um, after this particular year, and it also included the adoption of Policy IB, Henry County's Organizational Accountability Policy, which is a transformative policy to really um, chart that course for Henry County Schools. We also included in that consent agenda was a uh, lease agreement for that Boys and Girls Club to find its home at our Henry County Learning and Support Center at Henry County Middle. And, uh, and really, with some asphalt reclamation and an easement uh, included, uh, it was a uh, full evening and um, strong unanimous action by our Board of Education. And of course, the last action item, which also uh, provides you the opportunity to welcome new team members was uh, personnel that was uh, unanimously approved. And we have some uh, a new leader to welcome to the, right. uh, the principalship. It is always my pleasure to welcome to the team now our newest principal at Hampton Elementary School, Dr. St. Amy. Welcome to the team and as always, we look forward to your leadership impact. I think that pretty much rounded out our time together yesterday <laughs> and I uh, certainly hope that you tune in to the full recording if you'd like any more details on any of the items we highlighted today. Yep, you can always visit our website to see the full version, the full length version on demand of the study session, which starts at four o'clock. We also had our 6.30 budget hearing, so if you'd like to take a look at that. Uh, and then of course we have our seven o'clock meeting, uh, our general uh, business session, um, which was accomplished. We thank you so very much as always for tuning in. As, we, as a reminder, we are a mere four weeks away from the end of what has been uh, probably one of the toughest but most rewarding school years and there's so much momentum as we move into to the next year and as we uh, encourage everybody to do we just ask everybody to really uh, continue to support uh, and help finish strong this uh, wonderful school year and really uh, send it out on a high note so thank you so very much for joining us as always uh, on behalf of mary elizabeth davis i'm jd harden uh, and we will look forward to seeing you next month while this is just a monthly recap of the Board of Education meetings, you can find the full-length version by visiting our website or clicking on the links in the description section below.